Well, the simple truth is that uh, if we're content with a non-praying church, that's what we'll have. And the average pastor that I've confronted on the issue of the prayer life of his church uh, makes it perfectly clear that by the way he looks at it, well, they just aren't a praying people. And he feels justified in serving the congregation because they don't have uh, sufficient uh, desire to become a praying people. But that's a pretty shoddy excuse. If a pastor is truly the leader of the church, he's got to set the pattern. A non-praying pastor pretty well guarantees a non-praying church. And when a pastor sets his heart uh, to be a man of prayer himself, and then he sees the urgent necessity of a praying church, then he will be led by the Holy Spirit in whatever way is appropriate to that church to turn it into a praying church. So I have often asked men just plainly, are you willing to pastor a prayerless church? Well, most have never been confronted with that question and haven't had to wrestle with it. But if they'll look at it honestly, they'll have to admit the situation is what it is because they're content with things that way. So I have often said to people, if you will set your heart to pastor only a praying church, then one of two things will happen. Either you will pastor a praying church or they will put you out. And what could be more wonderful than to be put out of a church that refuses to be a house of prayer? I don't think pastors are always honest with themselves. And uh, this is obviously what we're speaking of, being absolutely honest. Christ made it clear that the house of prayer was God's intent for his people. In the cleansing of the temple on those two occasions recorded in the Gospels, we know perfectly well what happened. Christ drove the merchants, the money changers, out one door. They came in another. Twice. Same basic effect. He makes it clear on those occasions, my father's house is a house of prayer. But when that change does not take place, he in time mounts the hill overlooking the temple site, and he says, your house is left unto you desolate. And what a tragedy to spend your life in a ministry where God has already made it clear he's never going to come. And when one thinks seriously about that incident, what year was it that Christ spoke those words? Well, obviously we don't know exactly. But just for ease and thinking, let's say it was 33. And we know that Christ had said that the day would come when there would not be one stone left standing upon another. And when was that prophecy fulfilled? Well, that we do know exactly. That was the year 70. But there they are, pretending to be the temple of the living God, and God has made it clear, it's your house, not mine. So for 37 years, he's not there. And is there a pastor anywhere that can afford to throw away 37 years of his life? 